The Adverse Effects in Malnourished Children, a Health Education Program. Presentation by Katie Grogan, LPN to BSN student nurse for the Nurse 444 Community Health Nursing course at Indiana State University. Learning Objectives. To find the term malnutrition, identify the population at risk, describe the signs and symptoms of malnutrition, understand the basic nutritional needs for children, explain the short and long-term effects of malnutrition, recognize the resources available to the community, and given the necessary materials, successfully take the pre and post test. Malnutrition defined. A deficiency of nutrients in the body, known as a micronutrient deficiency. It is caused by the following. Lack of consuming proper nutrients either by not having enough to eat or by eating a poor diet. Undernutrition, meaning the child is underweight or overweight and obesity. Two different ends of the spectrum when it comes to malnutrition. It also can occur from the inability of the body to properly digest or use the consumed nutrients. And this is known as a diet-related non-communicable disease. The population at risk. Malnutrition in relation to both underweight and overweight children. They're at risk because it, malnutrition causes weakened immune systems, delays in growth and development, and compromises all organs and body systems. There is a higher frequency in infants and preschoolers due to greater vulnerability at this age groups. We'll begin with a pretest, which can be found at the link shared here. Question 1. Which population is most vulnerable to malnutrition? Question 2. Which of the following is the term for deficiency of nutrients in the body? Question 3. What are the developmental effects from malnutrition? Question 4. What are the effects on weight in regards to malnutrition? Question 5. What are the basic nutritional needs to support nutrition? Question 6. Which body system has adverse effects that accounts for the highest rate of mortality in malnutrition? Question 7. What is the average amount of days a malnourished ch child will be hospitalized? Question 8. What, what is the leading infection seen in children with malnutrition? Question 9. What is the term for the diagnosis related to disease from nutrition? What are the effects of morbidities from malnutrition? Question 10. The signs and symptoms of malnutrition. The most common clinical presentations are fatigue, dizziness, changes in weight, wasting. So these ch children are actually coming in and they are, you see the, how much they are emancipated. So their body is not gaining weight. They're stunting, so they're delays in growth. They're underweight. They're overweight or they're already at the obesity scale. There's a water electrolyte imbalance from inadequate vitamin and minerals. Developmental, they're a failure to thrive. They have a short stature and they're slow growth. There's muscle weakness, again, that noticeable wasting and loss of muscle. If left untreated, it can lead to physical or mental disabilities. And eventually, this can cause mortality. Children that are not treating their malnutrition can have an, the end result of unfortunate death. So the basic nutritional needs, there are six categories that are imperative to good nutrition. There must be the right amount of consumption of minerals, vitamins, proteins, fats, water, and carbohydrates. In malnourished children, the mobilization of phagocytes to the immune response is affected. So this significantly compromises the first line of defense, which increases the susceptibility to infection. So malnourished children have a very weak immune system. It's actually the one of the greatest factors to which malnutrition is responsible for the highest rates of morbidity and mortality is that compromised immune system leading to increased risk of infections and actual diagnosis of infections that usually go untreated. 
So here's a statistic. Just in 2010, there were 7.6 million deaths of children under the f- five years of age. 64% of those were caused by infectious disease. That is a significant amount of children that died due to infection. And again, that's from that compromised, weakened immune system. Hospital admissions, where they're seeing, again, the infections. Respiratory tract infections account for more than half of those children admitted with malnutrition. Diarrhea and hospital stays average of 12.7 days, so at a minimum between six and the maximum seen amount of days for treating malnutrition was 26 days. Short and long-term effects, short-term, so again, those mineral electrolyte imbalances, not having the proper vitamins, we're going to see hypoalbuminemia, hypo or hypercalcemia, metabolic acidosis, hypoglycemia, these children can be in shock, and hypo and hypernatremia. So all those imbalances of vitamins and minerals. Long term, they're at risk for mortality, morbidities from dehydration, cardiac failure, and severe anemia. The Sustainable Development Goal aims to end malnutrition by 2030. Additionally, they want to ensure that every individual has access to fish, sufficient and nutritious food. They have created six nutritional-based global targets. One, 40% reduction in the number of children under five who are stunted. Two, to have 50% reduction of anemia in women of reproductive age. Three, to have 30% reduction in low birth weight, so low birth weight is a huge factor in malnourished infants. Four, to have no increase in child overweight. Five, to have 50% increase in the rate of exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of an infant's life. And six, to reduce and maintain childhood wasting to less than 5%. And those sustainable development goals are published by the World Health Organization. Our role as public health nurses and community nursing, some interventions. We want to promote optimal nutrition practices in infants and children. If we're in contact with mothers who are pregnant, we wanna enforce and emphasize that maternal nutrition and efforts to prevent low birth weight. So prenatal care is imperative. Again, we mentioned breastfeeding and the importance and benefits that have been found in the nutritional aspect of breastfeeding. We want to promote good sanitation practices, make sure that our clients have access to clean drinking water and appropriate use of health services. We'll now go over the answers to the post-test. Question one, the answer is A and C, infants and preschoolers. Question two, this term is known as a micronutrient deficiency. Question three, the developmental effects of malnutrition, failure to thrive and short stature slow growth. Question four, all of the above. Question five, all of the above. Question six, which body system? Immune. Again, that high risk of infection. Question seven, the average hospital days is 12.7. Question eight, respiratory tract infections. Question nine, it's known as diet-related non-communicable diseases. And question 10, A, B, and C. Those morbidities are dehydration, cardiac failure, and severe anemia. Resources for malnutrition can be found on these following organizations, government organizations. The CDC, the NIH, the National Institute of Health, Feed the Future, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, and the World Food Program. All information is found within these three references is cited here.